ages ago, I did a video on Bash Top. Now, Bash Top is basically a system monitor in the same vein as something like H Top. And as the name would suggest, it's written in Bash. Now, being written in Bash and having a bunch of really cool features, it's horrendously slow. It takes ages to load. It takes ages to do anything in the application. So the developer decided to remake the application in Python and also add a bunch of extra cool features to it and name that one BPyTop, which is the topic for today. Obviously, Python is by no means the fastest language out there, but it's plenty fast enough for this application. If we go and launch up BashTop, you'll see exactly what I mean. This takes a couple of seconds to load, even on my 3600X. In the case of BPyTop, that loads up basically instantly. But if it was just a re-implementation in Python, I would not be doing this video, so let's see what it can actually do. Inside of BPyTop, we have four windows. We have the CPU window, the memory window, the net window, and then the process window. Now, the first big change between this and BashTop is all of these windows can actually be hidden. So you might notice up here, there's a little one next to the CPU. If I go and press one, that will go and hide that section. If I press three, that'll hide the net section, so on and so forth. And like BashTop, BPyTop does an absolutely amazing job at making sure you know the key binding. So anything on my theme that is highlighted in pink is going to be a key binding. The only places where that doesn't hold true is with the network section here where it has B to go back and N to go forward. And then you might also think that less than and greater than also do the exact same thing. But that's not actually the case. They don't actually do that. Also with the select here, because up and down or the enter key can't really be confused with part of the name, those also aren't highlighted. One thing to note is the key bindings are case sensitive. So if I press capital M, that'll open up the menu. I'll get more into this in just a bit, but from the menu, if we press down, we can go to the help screen and this will show us a full list of the key bindings. Generally, you don't really need to come here though. And if we press lowercase m, that will change our layout. So right now we're on the stat layout. Now we're on the proc layout and now we're back to full. So if you go and actually hide any of these sections, you will also have another layout and that layout is going to be called the user layout. I would like to have the option to have more user layouts, but having at least one there is perfectly fine. Also, if we do have a layout selected and then we quit out of the application, it will remember the layout that we were previously using. So the CPU section hasn't really changed. There's a couple of layout changes here, but for the most part, it's exactly as it was. So from here, you might notice there's this 2000 millisecond thing. This is basically the tick rate of the application. So basically the information will be updated every 2000 milliseconds. If you do go and decrease this a lot, obviously the application is going to require more performance and it might start to slow down on a slower system. However, unlike the Bash version, my system handles it basically perfectly, but there's no reason to really have it updating that quickly because actually seeing the information is going to be kind of difficult. In the memory section, the information being shown is no different from what was being shown in BashTop, but it's being shown in a slightly different way. So right now you're seeing a graph version of my memory usage. Obviously none of it's moving because I'm not using anything that's actually changing my amount of memory being used, but we can also go and see this as a bar version by pressing G. And if you don't care about seeing your disk usage, pressing D will go and hide that. Now, I do like that information, so I will bring it back. Now, with the disk usage, we're seeing both the disk capacity as well as the disk I.O. So if you just want to see the I.O., pressing I will go and hide the capacity. And then pressing S, move this swap information here from the memory section into the disk section. So in I.O. mode, we can actually see how much the swap is actually being used. And then if we go back to the regular mode, we can see both the swap capacity as well as its IO. One thing that bothers me about this, which you may have noticed, is right now, swap is in the center. If we go over to IO mode, swap is now at the bottom. I don't know why it's inconsistent. I would keep it in the exact same place every single time. None of those key bindings existed back on bash top, and the exact same is true for the net section, with the exception of B and N for swapping your network device. This box shows you a more readable form of the network graph. Now, you can see there is a download total and an upload total, so if we go and press Z, that is going to go and reset those values, but weirdly, it doesn't actually reset the values because pressing Z again will take you back to that previous total. I don't understand why it works like that, but that's just how it works. 
Off to the left-hand side, you may notice a 10k for the download and a 10k for the upload. And if you keep watching those values, you might notice them actually change. And the reason why they're changing is because I have automatic scaling enabled. So if we want to go and disable that scaling and have the graph always be consistent, we can go and press A. But by default, the scaling is set to 10 megabytes, so it's basically impossible to use. Now, why is supposed to go and manually sync the scale? But I've never actually got it to work in manual mode. I've only had it work in automatic mode and I don't really understand why. I think that might be a bug but I'm not entirely sure because neither of these functions are really well documented so I've only really worked them out by just playing around with them. And the last section we have is the process section, which if you've used HTOP before, it's basically HTOP with a couple of extra key bindings. So pressing F is going to let us do a filter. Let's search for something like 30. And that's going to show the processes with 30 in their name. If we then go and press enter, we can then go and scroll through that. And let's say I want to look at the information for this one right here. So pressing enter on that will show me that info. It'll show me things like the memory usage and the threads it's using and all of the things like that. BPI top doesn't let you send arbitrary signals. I really wish it did because that is the one feature missing from the process section, but it does let you send the three main signals you may want to use. Terminate, kill, and interrupt. Something I didn't mention earlier is all of these things with a key binding on them are also clickable. So let's say I want to hide the disks. Pressing that is going to go and hide it. I typically wouldn't use that because I don't like using my mouse most of the time in a terminal application, but it is nice to have that functionality there. As for the menu system on capital M, this returns from Bashtop, but it's been massively upgraded. So unlike Bashtop, we actually have sections now, not just a massive list. So these sections can be tabbed through, or you can go and jump directly to them by pressing a number. So tab, 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 shift tab will go backwards, or I can go and press four and jump directly to net. This menu serves as an alternative way to modify the config file if you're just not comfortable doing that or you want to take advantage of the fact that for some things, there's only a set number of correct values. So in the case of the theme, I can only select a correct theme. In the case of a true or false value, I can only select true or false. In the case of the update timer, it has to be a number. Basically, it does a little bit of correction for you, but if you do go and put in a value, say for the draw clock, which is absolute nonsense, it's not going to help you. If you want to go modify the config file though, it's very easy to find. It's just going to be located inside your .config directory, inside of the bpytop directory, and then inside of a file known as bpytop.com. And the default version of the config has all of the same documentation that you would see inside of the application. So it's very easy to work out how to actually modify. You may have noticed by the amount of colors in the application that this is a true color application. If you go and open it up inside of a terminal that isn't a true color terminal, if it does support 256 colors, it will downscale the color scheme to 256. If you opened up in something like, say, your TTY, make sure you go into the options and disable the true color option. Otherwise, the application will completely break. One thing that slightly bothers me is if I go and reorder the items inside of shown boxes, so if I go mem and then proc, it doesn't actually go and reorder any of the windows. That is one of the things that I think is still very much missing from the application. While having some of this customization is nice, I would like to have things like reordering and resizing, but that's just not a thing you can do right now. Overall, if you're already running Bashtop, BPyTop is just objectively better. It does everything Bashtop does and more and is quicker. There's no reason not to go and run it. But the developer isn't actually done here, so he's decided that he no longer wants to work on BPyTop because Python just isn't quick enough. So he's going to go and work on a C++ version and rewrite the application a third time. I don't know why he doesn't just go and write it in C and be done with it, but this is what he wants to do. Maybe he's just trying to learn all of these languages as he goes. I don't know what he's doing, but when that one does actually get released publicly, absolutely expect me to do a video on that as well. Personally, if BPyTop had the ability to just send arbitrary signals, I would just replace HTOP and never use that again. But because it doesn't, HTOP is still generally where I go to. But I'll leave a link to it in the description down below if you want to go and check it out for yourself. 
So that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Mitchell, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Peter, D, Stephen, Tease, Through, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave appeal, that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week. And then this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>